I am Dr. Neema Bisht, BDS by degree and a pharma professional. I am founder of Career in Pharma, wherein I provide guidance and training to healthcare professionals and life science graduates on how they can make career into pharmaceutical industry. Till date, we have guided and trained more than 500 students and many of them are now placed into various companies also under my guidance. Also, I want to tell you that beware of fake people who are operating under the name of Career in Pharma or by my name. So to connect with us, please see the description below for all the links and also you can see the mail ID provided in the description box. Hello everyone, once again I welcome you all to Career in Pharma. So today in this video I will be talking about one of the most important questions for clinical research operations. It means whenever you are going to give interview for fresher level or experience level also, this question is the most important. You should mug up and you should learn this question. And the question is what are ICH GCP principles? Yeah. So basically ICH is an international council for harmonization. It is an international body which takes care of harmonization in the clinical trials happening around the world. GCP are the good clinical practices. These are the guidelines which each and every pharma company and CRO has to follow whenever they are conducting the clinical trial. So any clinical trial should follow these ICA GCP principles. There are total 13 principles to this ICA GCP which is very important. The most important question you should be knowing all the 13 principles not necessary that you just you know learn word by word or exactly mug up whatever is written first try to understand it and then it will be very easy to you know remember also no need to you know each and every should not, word should not be like given as per the document but you can do here and there the crux of that single principle should be clear okay now before moving forward to 13 principles of ICA GCP, let me tell you one thing that main agenda, you know, main, uh, main motive behind any clinical trial is that the right safety and well-being of the clinical trial participants should be the utmost priority for any company running the clinical trial and it should not be compromised means it should not be compromised uh, because of the you know interest of society or interest of uh, uh, because of science and all those reasons the ultimate safety well-being of clinical trial participants should be the utmost priority of any clinical trial and clinical trials should be conducted in accordance with these ICA GCP principles and applicable regulatory requirement as per the specific country regulatory requirement also it should be uh, it should follow those uh, regulatory guidelines as well. Yeah, sometimes uh, country wise, city wise, area wise, also there are some requirements, legal requirements that also they should follow and comply with. And one of the most common among all clinical trials is ICA GCP because ICA GCP is internationally followed and will remain same for each and every country. So let's begin these principles. Now first principle says clinical trials should be conducted in accordance with the ethical principle. Ethical principle that have their origin and root in the declaration of Helsinki. So Helsinki is a place in Finland. Yeah, there one declaration happened regarding the uh, ethical consideration of the clinical trial participants. So it was taken long back. It happened in history so what they are saying any clinical trial which is happening anywhere around the world they should be conducted in accordance with the ethical principle which have their origin and root in the declaration of Helsinki and they should be consistent with GCP and the applicable regulatory requirement right so clinical trial should be conducted in accordance with uh, the ethical principle with their origin in declaration of Helsinki, they should be consistent with GCP and applicable regulatory requirement. This is the first principle. 
Now second principle is before starting any trial so whatever the forcible risk and inconvenience are there they should be weighed against the anticipated benefit anticipated because we have not conducted clinical trial we are just anticipating it's like kind of a forecast we are doing right so they are saying that before initiating a clinical trial it should be measured that what kind of risk are going to be happen and if risk are more or benefits are more and any trial should be initiated if benefit outweighs the risk see with any drug risk can be there right but we should measure and we should start any clinical trial when we can see that we can forecast is that you know benefit will be more as compared to risk so in short anticipated benefit should be more as compared to risk then only we should be initiating the trial third principle is the right safety and well being which i already mentioned in the beginning the right safety and well being of trial participants is the most important consideration and it should prevail over the interest of science of society fourth principle is so now when we started trial by measuring risk benefit and when we are just considering the right safety well being of trial participant after that the available non clinical and clinical information on the investigational product it should be adequate it should be enough to support the proposed clinical trial okay fifth principle is clinical trial should be scientifically sound and it should be described in a clear detailed protocol there should be a loud clear detailed protocol and it should be scientifically sound before you start any clinical trial as per that protocol only the clinical trial should go yeah now sixth principle is irb approval so they are saying a trial should be conducted in accordance with protocol right we should be having a clear loud detailed protocol that is scientifically sound now a clinical trial should be conducted in compliance with the protocol and this protocol should be receiving prior irb approval no clinical trial can start without approval of protocol from irb institutional review board which we call it as ethics committee also okay so ethics committee or institutional review board they will give approval to this protocol then only any clinical trial can start in accordance with the protocol as well now seventh principle is the medical care so in short seventh principle is talking about that whatever medical care medical decision will be made for clinical trial participants will be a responsibility of qualified physician that we call as principal investigator or sub investigator and it can be a qualified dentist as well depending on what kind of trial it is because if any trial is related to um, let's say any dental issues then in that case the principal investigator can be a dentist also right so seventh principle is about the medical care and the medical decision of the clinical trial patients which is responsibility of principal investigator or sub investigator or a qualified dentist depending on the trial now eighth principle says that each and every individual who are involved in conducting not i am say, telling about clinical trial patients i am saying the people who are involved in the conducting of trial be it principal investigator be it sub investigator be it clinical research coordinator be it clinical research associate be it nurses be it data management team all in each individual involved in conducting a trial should be qualified by education training and experience so they should be having proper degree with them they should be having proper training in advance and if any trial is there which requires expertise so they sh- these individuals should be having a proper experience also with them to perform their respective task so this is eighth principle now ninth principle says that freely given informed consent should be obtained from each and every participant prior to clinical trial participation very important 
there should be a proper informed consent process documentation everything and this informed consent should be given freely by each and every clinical trial participant before starting the clinical trial ten principle says all the clinical trial information whatever we are recording during clinical trial it should be recorded handled and stored so first of all we have to record it take it uh, you know uh, in a proper manner we should be handling it in a proper manner and then after that it should having a proper storage in a way that it should allow its accurate reporting interpretation and verification means whatever data we are recording handling and storing should be uh, should be uh, able to you know uh, uh, it should be accurate and we should be able to report it interpret it and verify it yeah 11th principle says that confidentiality of all these records which we are recording handling and storing confidentiality of all these record that could identify participants should be protected means confidentiality of records should be maintained and anything which can identify any clinical trial participant should be masked identity identity of each and every individual clinical trial participant should be protected respecting the privacy and confidentiality rule in accordance with the applicable regulatory requirement now 10th principle says investigational product okay the clinical trial drug the test drug it should be manufactured handled and stored so first manufactured handled and stored in accordance with applicable good manufacturing practice so there is something called gmp which is like a guideline rules for manufacturing of any drug manufacturing handling and storage so the investigational product which is in use inside clinical trial should also follow good manufacturing practice in terms of their handling manufacturing and storage and they should used in accordance with the approved protocol means whatever dose is mentioned in the protocol whatever way is mentioned in the protocol accordingly the investigational product should be in use inside clinical trial yeah means if it's given twice in a day so accordingly we have to give if it's written intravenous so we have to give it intravenous right and their storage manufacturing and handling should be in accordance with gmp now last principle that is 13th principle says system with procedures okay system with procedures that assures the quality of each and every aspect of trial should be implemented means we should be placing such kind of systems and procedures inside clinical trial that it should be assuring the quality of each and every aspect of trial and not just we should be having those kind of system and procedure we should be implementing it also so that at the end of the clinical trial we will be getting a quality data because whatever trial we are doing ultimately what we need we need quality data that can be replicated that can be verified that can be interpreted right so there should not be any compromise with the quality of the data because ultimately the data which we are going to submit after this clinical trial to the regulatory authorities they are going to give us approval or they can you know disapprove also depending on the data because they will not be coming you know uh, directly at the site every interpretation they will made by going through the data so the data should be a quality data yeah so guys these are all the 13 principle icas gcp principles which should be followed which should be follow while running any clinical trial in any pharma company or cro yes and all the uh, professionals involved in site clinical trial be it nurse clinical research coordinator trial coordinator assistant each and every one should be knowing these principles thoroughly yeah so these are the 13 principles if you understand it then no need to mugging up the things it will be very easy to remember but yes this is the most important question you should be knowing each and every principle 
and not just mugging up you should be understanding it okay so i hope i was able to explain all the 13 ica gcp principle which is the most important question for any clinical research operations interview in pharmacovigilance interview no one will ask you but still you can just have a you know layout kind of thing in your mind but if you are going to give interview for clinical research operations then definitely this is one of the most important question yeah so i hope you like this video please if you like this video please subscribe to our channel and please share this video with your friends so that they can also get benefit of this and then please subscribe to our channel yeah we'll be coming soon with some fresh next video till that time stay safe healthy updated aware and explore new things yeah and all the best to all of you for all the people who are hunting for job and giving interviews all the best have a nice day bye bye